Texas A&M's win total is currently set at 8.5. And while it's still super early in the offseason, we have what, six, seven months left. It, it could go up or down depending on what else happens during the offseason. It's the number we have to go off. So how does Connor Wigman impact that number? How can Connor Wigman lead AM to to hit the over, right? Like like what has to happen? So I want to talk about the pathway for AM to hit the hit the win total and kind of just go through the schedule and go through each game and talk about who has the advantage. Does Wigman have the advantage? How can he use his his ability to do well against this certain team, right? If he hits his ceiling like a lot of people who are smarter than me think he's going to, uh, AM fans, but just people on the recruiting service in general if he hits the ceiling then they're gonna smash this win total easy right if he doesn't things could get tricky uh and, and i'm big on wigman I always have been i think he has a world of talent but anum fans have told me this before and we've talked about it like he's shown a lot of, of of good flashes but he just has to stay healthy he has to be consistent right he has to be be the guy so if he can take that next step, if he can take Klein's offense and maximize Klein's offense, if Klein can put Wigman in a good position to succeed, they should hit this win total of 8.5, right? He already has, I shouldn't say plenty of experience, but he's got a good amount of experience relative and compared to some of the quarterbacks he's going to be playing, which I think can give you an advantage and just in your own, and that own right, right? Uh, you have a legitimate shot in all of them. Like you could be the favorite in, in most all of these games. Uh, depending how the season goes. You could really be the favorite, especially with the majority of their tougher games coming at home, which I think is a huge advantage for AM and for Wigman playing against these maybe better defenses. He gets to play them at home. So with that said, let's dive into the schedule. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, uh, please consider subscribing. We're just a big quarterback hub. We talk all things college football quarterback related. I know that it's his win total, but we're, we're trying to kind of talk about how the quarterback can can impact this total right so with that said like share subscribe right all right that was the last plug all right so let's talk about notre dame you get notre dame at home no idea what the if there's any like early betting right now if there's any other early futures that are out there maybe there is i'm sure you can find it at some point but you get notre dame at home notre dame has a lot of hype this year notre dame's schedule is very friendly they traveled to a and m you got you got riley leonard um one of the best quarterbacks in the transfer portal Leonard's legs could be the difference in this game. If you haven't watched Leonard play a Duke quarterback, he, he could be the difference in this game. However, with Coach Mike Elko being his former coach at Duke, there may be some insight there, right? I think the advantage is kind of split. If you think Leonard can 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 beat you with your legs, and then, then maybe maybe Notre Dame's a favorite. If you think hey, Anum's at home. You got Mike Elko who coached Leonard the past what two years and, and should have some insight. And then you have Connor Wigman, who you think is going to do really well in this system with Colin Klein, right? So I think it's a toss-up game, but I'm actually going to lean AM here. But I think it's a toss-up game. It's one of the four toss-up games, in my opinion, or toss-up-ish game, right? All right, you got Notre Dame number one. McNeese at home, that's two. Florida away, that should be a win. Unless Florida is, is improved, which I'm still kind of holding out some hope that they can be. Like, I'm not one who's, like, jumping on the pile that, hey, Florida's for sure, you know, going to win less than six games. It, it very likely could happen. But I'm still holding out some hope on them. I'm, I, I still think Graham Mertz can have a – it is worth a few wins. But I still think Anum is the favorite going to Florida. you got to win that game, right? You have to win Florida – away that's going to be Wigman's first like real big test this year uh for 2024 playing at, uh not at home all right so you got Florida away you got to win that game to hit you over you got Bowling Green at home win you got Arkansas at, at uh at Jerry World uh and, and AM owns Arkansas Arkansas had that win a few years ago it's still always a tricky game like it's still always funky but AM tends to come out on top Arkansas got Arkansas has a new OC new quarterback I lean AM as well and then we got Mizzou at home I think Mizzou is still going to have a really good season. I probably lean Mizzou here just based off Brady Cook's going to be his third year in this offense. They're returning his, his go-to receiver, if not maybe his top two receivers, but for sure his go-to receiver. I think I lean Mizzou here, but still it's at home. You still get a tough game at home. and has got a chance. And they got Mississippi State next away. New coach, new quarterback from uh, from Baylor, Blake Shapin coming in. I probably lean, or no, I don't probably. I, I I go with A&M on this game. Then you have LSU at home. This is not a toss-up game for me. I can see this going either way right now. If LSU's defense is improved, I lean LSU. If LSU's defense is not improved, I probably lean A&M. I, although I really like Nussmeyer from LSU, but I like Connor Wigman as well. I think both these guys could be two of the 
the the faces of of SEC quarterbacks by the end of the season, right? Toss up game for me. I lean LSU. It's at home though. You got a chance. South Carolina. It's a way new young quarterback who I really like, but I still lean A and M, especially with Wigman compared to this new young quarterback, especially this point in the season. Taking Wigman and A and M. New Mexico State home. Auburn away. Got to beat Auburn to get this win total. Then you have Texas at home. And I talked about this in the Texas video I did. Uh, talking about Quinn Ewers. Anytime Texas plays at a and M or A and M plays at Texas. If you grew up in Texas, you know this. Even if it's a home game, it's not like you have a huge home field advantage per se. Like y- y- you have more fans from Texas there than you would say if 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 uh, whatever South Carolina or Georgia came, right? Even a big school like Georgia, just because Texas fans show up, and if the game's at Texas, you're gonna have more A and M fans there than any other kind of opposing team, right? You're not gonna have more fans in Texas, and Texas isn't gonna have more fans than A and M. But it's not the true home field advantage, if that kind of makes sense. You still have some home field advantage. It's still at your house. It's still great. But with rivalries like like this, and I'm so happy it's back, just being from Texas, living in Texas, um, it's not a true, true home field advantage, if that makes sense. Now, I view this game as a toss-up just because it's a rivalry. I don't know what's going to happen. I lean Texas. I think Texas should be really good, but I'm not sure what's going to happen. Right. So it comes down to if AM can go – at the very minimum, if AM goes one and three in those four games against Notre Dame, Mizzou, LSU, and Texas, and they have no slip ups, they're nine and three and they beat the win total. I think that's a possibility. Um, it's easier to say, say that now in the middle of February than when the season starts, but I think it's a possibility, especially if Wigman hits that se- the his ceiling. I think they could they could be a ten plus one team. If he if he gets close to the ceiling, they're nine. If he is taking steps, but maybe still a bit further away, then I could see them losing all four of these games, even though they're at home. However, it, it's really hard for me to think a is going to lose four games at home uh, against these opponents who are good opponents, maybe favored, but they're not like this next top tier above a and per se, besides maybe Texas going in. But again, that game's funky. It's a rivalry game. Uh, so yeah, I think you can't slip up in any any of these games. You have to have no slip ups, one and three minimum against these teams. But you could also, I mean, I could see a scenario happening where you're two and two, three and one. Right? Could be an exciting year for A and M. Just don't slip up. Right? Uh, so A and M fans, what what do you think? Do you think you hit the over, the under? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you think Wigman has to play for A and M to hit the over? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And again, if you like this quarterback kind of niche stuff, even though we're more kind of win total in this video but if you like quarterback niche stuff please consider subscribing we, we put out quarterback content almost on a daily basis and we have a we just start season two of our podcast with current and former quarterbacks coming on and talking about their experiences and kind of giving us an inside look on things so kind of some cool stuff right so follow along like share subscribe we'll see you next time peace